Hey everyone, welcome back. In this series, we are going through this incredible book, The Way of the Superior Man, reading it chapter by chapter and doing a little discourse at the end so you can get the incredible uh, wisdom uh, that's in this book and apply it into your own life. So this book is called The Way of the Superior Man by David Dieter. The subtext is A Spiritual Guide to Mastering the Challenges of Women, Work and Sexual Desire. Uh, it was a, yeah, a beautiful book given to me when I was 18 and I'm 35 now and I still uh, get new lessons out of it and uh, yeah, it's, it's my pleasure to uh, be sharing that wisdom with you. So, chapter 9, Do It For Love. The way a man penetrates the world should be the same way he penetrates his woman, not merely for personal gain or pleasure but to magnify love, openness, and depth. The next time you embrace your woman sexually, feel your ultimate desire, your deepest desire for life. Feel why you are doing anything at all in life and specifically why you are uniting with your lover. There may be lesser reasons, but what is your deepest ultimate lesson? Most men's ultimate reason for doing anything has to do with discovering their deepest truth, enjoying total freedom and love, and giving their fullest gifts. Yet, many men settle for enjoying a little bit of freedom and love while incompletely giving their gifts. They enjoy the freedom to buy a nice car, to have loving sex fairly often, and to sleep late on Sunday they generously donate their spare cash to a good cause, lovingly buy their woman a diamond ring, and happily coach the little league team. These are enjoyable freedoms and real gifts that make a significant difference in people's lives, but for many men, it's still not enough. The freedom or love they have achieved and the way they have given their gifts often leaves a sense of incompleteness. Something is still lacking. There is still a desire to go beyond, to untrap themselves, to enjoy life free of a subtle sense of constraint, loneliness, underlying tension and fear. And for many men, try as they might, the sense remains that their fullest gifts remain ungiven. Their life feels somewhat false at its core, as does their sexing, when a man gives his true gift of sex to his woman, he penetrates and blooms her beyond all limits into love. It is the same with the world. To bloom woman and world for real takes authenticity, persistence and courage of heart. A man must know the truth at his core and be willing to give his gifts fully. No holding back. He must be willing to dedicate his sex and his life to magnifying love by penetrating woman and world with his true gifts. This willingness is rare. Many men are willing to poke their woman and bloom her in a mediocre way, sharing a few orgasms and a few emotional moments of bonding before going over tomorrow's schedule. Many men are willing to poke the world and bloom it in a mediocre way, making a few bucks and contributing enough betterment so they don't feel like their life is a total waste. But very few men are willing to do the deed for real, to use everything they've got to liberate their woman and the world into the deepest possible truth, love and openness. Few men are willing to give their deepest genius, their true endowment, the poetry of their very being, with every thrust of sex and life. Most men are limpid with doubts and insecurities, or they hold back their true drive because of fear. So they diddle their woman and world just enough to extract the pleasure and comfort they need to assuage their nagging sense of falsity and incompleteness. But if you are willing to discover and embrace your truth, lean through your fears and give everything you've got, you can penetrate the world and your woman 
from the core of your blue, your being and bloom them into love without limit. You can ravish your woman so deeply that her surrender breaks your heart into light. You can press yourself into the world with such enduring love that the world opens and receives your deepest gifts. There is no essential difference between entering your woman's feminine heart and entering fully into the world. Both forms of intercourse, sexual and worldly, require sensitivity, spontaneity, and strong connection to deep truth in order to penetrate chaos and closure in a way that love prevails. Neither woman nor world are predictable. They will often seem to resist your gifts and test your capacity to persist. And, just as surely, they will tenderly respond to the authenticity of your relaxed ministrations, the freedom expressed in your humor, and the invasion of your adamant love. They will respond in love and receive you fully, only to resist and test you again moments or days later. Neither woman nor world can be second-guessed or fooled. They know when you're just sticking around, they want to receive you for real. There are two ways to deal with woman and world without compromising your true gifts or dribbling away the force of your deep being. One way is to renounce sexual intimacy and worldliness, totally dedicating yourself without distraction or compromise to the path you choose to pursue, free from the seemingly constant demands of woman and world. The other way is to fuck both to smithereens, to ravish them with your love unsheathed, to give your true gifts despite the constant tussle of woman and world, to smelt your authentic gifts in this friction of opposition and surrender, to thrust love from the freedom of your deep being, even as your body and mind die blissfully through the crucifixion of inevitable pleasure and pain, attraction and repulsion, gain and loss. No gifts left ungiven. No limit to the depth of being. Only openness, freedom and love as the legacy of your intercourse with women and world. If you are going to tryst with women and world at all, better to go all the way and ravish them from the depths of your true core blooming them open with the wide gifts of your unrelenting heart. Otherwise, if you sheepishly penetrate them to gratify your own needs, your woman and world will feel your lack of dedication, depth and truth. Rather than yielding in love to your loving, they will distract you, suck your energy and draw you into endless complications so that your life and relationship become an almost constant search from release from constraint. You can be a renunciate and live alone apart from woman and the world, but if you choose a life of sexual and worldly intercourse, you will feel trapped by woman and world unless you are free in the midst of true fuck, yielding yourself into the giving, holding nothing back, dissolving all time in the open of love. Through thick and thin, this is the way of the superior man. Go hard. Be you, be authentic, be real about what you want and be real about where you're at. Connect to the right types of people that you can have real conversations with and share with them where you're really at, what you're really afraid of, what you're really afraid people might think of you if things don't work. But live in realness. Live in authenticity. Live being real about what you actually want. And live being real about where you're actually at and work with the right people to slowly work on whatever insecurities, whatever fears, whether that is creating an actual plan to do the things you want to do, whether that's actually getting realistic about all the steps. And yes, it is overwhelming at the beginning to go after a big project because there's so many steps, but you've got to start by 
not deluding yourself, but by, by working with people and being in environments where you are just being real, you're actually there in the stadium, in the arena, pursuing whatever it is that you want. And actively every day you're alive. You actually feel like you're thriving because you've got something which is scary and like, like big, big enough and beautiful and, and compelling enough that it's scary to pursue it. You know that you've got your own things to work on on your way to get there. But it's your authenticity. It's you being real about every day, about everything that you're doing and everything that you're trying to do and everything that you're not with yet and you working on it. That's what makes you just feel alive. And there's magic in that. And there's fulfillment in that. That's what you know. a lot of this chapter was about. He's saying there's a, a sense of incompleteness, which is unfulfillment, incomplete. Un, it's not filled. It's not full. So when you... The way to feel full and fulfilled is when you own yourself and where you're at and where you're not at. And become okay with it and then when you can do that then it's like cool I got it let's go let's go forward now and it makes you feel alive and it's magnetic and people love it and they know they can trust you because you're being real about your, with yourself and they want to be around you for that reason even if you're not quite there yet they want to be around you it's about being real about where you're at and what you want and going for it. If you can own your weaknesses, own your insecurities, own your strengths, meaning admit what they are and admit them to the right people, you can actually start to make progress on it and work on it. But if you don't even get near it, don't even have a chance and then life just sucks energy out of you. So I hope you found this one insightful. I wish you all my love. Thank you for joining me. Uh, if there's anyone that you know that can benefit from this chapter, please do share this with them. Uh, and if you'd like to ever connect with me, um, add me on Instagram. It would be my pleasure to, to connect with you. Until the next chapter, see ya.